Hello, my name is Brooke Lester, and I'm recording this screencast to show users who used to use the old, or uh, especially those who used to use the old SP Scholars Press legacy fonts for Hebrew, Greek, or transliteration, uh, how to switch to Unicode fonts and to using Unicode fonts. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to do this. The, the Scholars Press fonts are no longer really supported. SP Atlantis doesn't work at all anymore in Operating System 10 on the Apple, and it's just time to move on. So let's get let's get Unicode with it. What we're going to it's going to be very easy. The the Unicode fonts that you need are already on your computer. They're called things like Times New Roman or Helvetica or Palatino or so, so many of these fonts that you already use. They have the Hebrew and Greek characters for the most part, and the transliteration characters for the most part that you need. Uh, what you have to do is to be able to get at them, and for that what you need is a new keyboard layout or an additional keyboard layout or two. So let's go get them. What we're going to do, uh, I'm going to focus on transliteration and pick up Hebrew and Greek just along the way, and you'll see why. For a transliteration keyboard layout, uh, that is to be able to type on my keyboard and make transliteration happen, I'm going to go to a place called the Summer Institute of Linguistics, SIL, and or for linguistics, and it's www.sil.org. And this site's a little hard to navigate. I'm just I know what I want, so I'm clicking on search, and I'm going to put in transliteration. And one of the top hits is going to be the Hebrew Greek transliteration Unicode Unicode keyboard for Macintosh. And this video is for Mac users, so that's what we're going to do. And I can go right down here to getting the Hebrew Greek Transliteration Unicode keyboard for Macintosh. And here it is. Here's the download. Now you'll see uh, this is from 2007, and that might make you nervous. Don't worry. I've used this back on Tiger operating system and then on uh, I jumped to Snow Leopard, and now I'm using it on Lion, and everything's working just fine. So yes, it's five years old. Yes, it will work great. So let's download Heb Geek Trans Uni. And the download is very, very quick. And once I go to my download folder, you'll see that there are three files here. Now one file is a PDF that you can just print it and tape it to your wall or do whatever you want. And it's going to give you the information on how to type these things in. Uh, so there's a little table here. If you want to make a uh, um, an S with the little hat check over it, you'll go option V and then S or whatever character you want. If you want the brev or breve, however we say that, you'll go option B for brave and then click the vowel that you want and that'll give it to you. If you want the macron, which is the straight line, you'll go option hyphen, that is a minus sign, and then click your vowel. You'll see me doing this in just a moment. So you just copy this off where you can reach it. And then you're going to take these two, the dot key layout and the dot icns files, and those are going to need to go into a special place. And so let's show you how to get there. What I'm going to do is open a new finder window. So I'm in the finder up here where it says finder and I'm going to click command N to open a new finder window. And the view I'm going to choose just because this makes me happier is instead of the icon view or the list view, I'm going to go to columns view like so. And in Lion, they've changed some of the defaults on what shows over here on the left. What we need is Macintosh hard drive. That's what we want, and you won't see it there. But that's okay. Just click any of your regular stuff like Documents. And then up here in the top of the window where there's the file icon and Documents, hit Command, uh, click. Command, click on it. And you'll see the file path all the way. And let's just click on Macintosh hard drive to change our view, what we're looking at here. And you can do this in icon view, I guess, if you want. It doesn't really matter. Here in Macintosh hard drive, you want the library folder. So let's double click on library. And inside the library folder, you want keyboard layouts. They'll be listed alphabetically. Here it is, keyboard layouts and you'll find that it's empty. That's fine. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these and drag them into that other window. You can drag them both at once or one at a time. Now you're going to get this little alert that says it can't happen. It just needs you to authenticate it with your password. You do have to be an administrative user of your computer to do this. So I'll put in my password for this user and it says fine. So now I've got my keyboard layout in the correct folder. I just have to be able to get at it. So what we're going to do is I've got this little thing up in my keyboard already, the American flag. You might not. In fact, you probably don't. I'm going to show you how to get it there. You're going to go Apple menu, System Preferences, and when System Preferences open, right up at the top you're going to see Language and Text. So let's click on Language and Text. And there what you want is this tab that says Input Sources because a keyboard layout is an input source. It's to input what you want. So you probably don't have this checked, Keyboard and Character Viewer. So go ahead and check it and I'm going to show you why in a minute. And then scroll down and click Hebrew Greek Transliteration Uni so that it's checked. If you're using Hebrew and Greek, and you probably are, go ahead and if you haven't checked it already, check Hebrew, Hebrew QWERTY. That's the keyboard where if you press B it's a bait, or R it's a resh, or T it's a tav, and so on. It's very, very nice. And uh, you might get Greek with it, with your Greek polytonic. That's fine. Greek polytonic just means Greek with all the uh, diacriticals. And again, just be sure you've also done Keyboard and Character Viewer up at the top. It'll probably automatically do this one at the bottom that says Show Input Menu in Menu Bar. If not, just click it and that, after I close this window, that's what we've got up here now where this American flag is. My usual keyboard layout is US English, which is fine. That's what I normally input into my keyboard, but I can change it to any of these other ones. So let's go to a Pages document and actually make this happen because we are all set. So I'm in a Pages document. It's just default. It's Helve no special fonts needed. I'm just using Helvetica here. And I could do a rough and ready transliteration. But I could already do that before. That's not what I want to do. I want to use my brand new Hebrew Greek transliteration Unicord layout. Now you see I've changed the layout, not the font. Helvetica is still the font. But watch what I can do by going Option B before I hit my E, I put a Brave on it. By hitting Option minus sign before my E, I put a Macron over it. By hitting Option V before my S, I put a hat check on it so that it's a shin. To, if I put an Option 6 before my I, it's wearing a circumflex. If I put an Option H before my T, it's underscore. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. What about my real Aleph? Option greater than sign. Whoops, how'd that rage get in there? Option greater than sign. Bara, E, Lo, Heem. You can see this goes pretty fast once you know what you're doing. I'm just doing this from memory. Um, it's just Helvetica, so if you want to make it italic, make it italic. If you want to make it bold, make it bold, because it's just Helvetica. You can change fonts if you want. Go Times New Rome, and you'll have the same results. Let's take the whole thing and select it. We'll make that Times New Roman instead. We could make it Palatino. They'll all look a little different, and some will be nicer than others, but they all have the characters. Um, as long as we're here, we could go and just, remember we put in Hebrew? QWERTY as a keyboard? Look, we're still in Times New Roman. It's not a problem, but away. Things are going a little slow because I've got the uh, screencast software running. Let's make this so it's not italic. Let's make it so it's not bold. There we go. So, B, Ray, Sheet, B, 
ba, ra, and so on. Piece of cake. Again, we're just in Times New Roman. Times New Roman looks okay. It doesn't look great. You can see some of the vowels are a little bit offset, you know, from where you would want them. But, you know, if you download the SBL Unicode Hebrew font and just do exactly what I just did with just put, so choosing the Hebrew, one of the Hebrew keyboard layouts and typing it in, you'll get it in beautiful SBL Hebrew font. So, look at what this means. No... No more specialty fonts. No more, you know, if I, if I write up my document using Hebrew and I've got, and I'm using SBL Hebrew because I want it to look pretty, if I send it to somebody who doesn't have SBL Hebrew, that's okay. They've got Times New Roman. They'll still be able to read the Hebrew. They'll still be able to read the, the transliteration. It might not look as nice as on my specialty Unicode fonts, but in Times New Roman, Helvetica, Palatino, everything's going to look just fine. That's all there is to it, folks. That's all we did here. So all we did, uh, just to quickly review, is we went to the Summer Institute of Linguistics and we downloaded this keyboard layout. And then we went and we found the folder, Macintosh Hard Drive Library Keyboard Layouts, and we dragged these two files from the download. And then we went to system preferences and went to language and text up at the top and there we made sure that we had selected in input sources the show input menu and menu bar so that would be up here uh, we chose keyboard and character viewer and I haven't shown you why yet and then we chose the layouts that we wanted to have included uh, real briefly, the reason I had you choose that is here's a nice little thing is, let's say I'm in pages, let's say that I'm typing and I can't remember what the keyboard combination is for something and I don't have the sheet of paper. You just go on Show Keyboard Viewer and it just gives you a little reminder of what's on your keyboard in the current layout. See, I've got the Hebrew layout and it shows me what's on all the keys. If I hit Option, that's what's on all the keys. If I hit Shift, that's what's on all the keys. And look, if I change the, key, the keyboard layout, let's say to transliteration, it changes everything accordingly. There's what happens if I hit Option. There's what happens if I hit Command. There's what happens if I hit Shift. Nothing special. See, it it's my cheat. It gives you a cheat to work with. So that's what you'll find. Anytime you're stuck, you can go down to Show Keyboard Viewer um, and you'll see your keyboard. And then if you really can't find something, you go to Show char Character Viewer, and there you can uh, work your way towards every single thing that exists in the font and sort of just double-click on it to stick it in your document. But you'll pretty much never have to do that. That's it. Um, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it makes you productive and you can go off and do amazing things with your Hebrew and Greek and your transliteration. Uh, that you couldn't do before and so much easier, so much easier than you could do it before with the legacy fonts and especially making collaboration so much easier than it was before. So go off, use this stuff, share documents with your friends and colleagues, collaborate and have a great time being a scholar uh, who uses Hebrew and Greek and transliteration. Thanks for watching. Bye.